Hi, uh, for week 13 I want to talk about organizational metaphors. Uh, organization and management theory has been based upon metaphor due to the increasing complexity of organizations. As a matter of fact, it's been like this for a hundred years. And metaphors describe both the nature and the management of the organization, so they're helpful in that way. Uh, they're used to provide meaning. They also provide a structure for approaching organization and management. And really the only disadvantage they offer is, as best said by Diltz, the map is not the territory. In other words, the metaphor is less complex than the actual organization. And it's not the actual organization, but because it is less complex, it helps us understand. Um, the metaphor that reigned for the longest period of time was the organization as a machine. And it was the metaphor for management theories such as Frederick Taylor's scientific management and Max Weber's bureaucracy. Uh, basically, it represents the organization as rational and designed to achieve a predetermined end, whereas the organization has goals and objectives. Um, it's structured with jobs and uh, activities. Its blueprint is uh, the organizational chart. And it sets an expectation for uh, how people should behave. It's the, the metaphor of choice for engineers. And probably because it treats the organization as a machine, so it focuses on structure, organization, and parts of the organization as if it were a machine. Uh, the first 100 years of management theory were driven by this metaphor, so for most people even today are comfortable with this, even when they don't like it. Um, the most common management metaphor used with the organization was business is war, and you still hear that type of thinking uh, today. Uh, the next uh, metaphor that evolved came out of the human relations movement in the 1920s and 30s and it brought us the organization as an organism metaphor. Uh, this metaphor recognized people and the fact that they had needs within the organization. Uh, the CEO was referred to as the head, you know, the organism and the head. Uh, the open system was introduced and the concept of contingency where the organization begins adapting to the environment was uh, was first thought of. And this was a significant change in thinking. Uh, this metaphor uh, was a metaphor of choice for human resources. There was an open system that must adapt to the environment. Survival and evolution or adaptation being central concerns. Focuses on the organization uh, organization's development and the, and the development of people. Focus on ecology. It recognized employees as people. Uh, the most common management metaphor used within this uh, organization as an organism was the business as a team. We still hear that today as well. Uh, the, the current metaphor we're using today is the organization as a social system was first coined by Russell Acoff. Um, it builds upon the open system model and considers the organization as a complex adaptive social system. Uh, the organization consists of interdependent parts, so if you change one part you're going to affect the other. Each subgroup has an effect on the whole, but none has an independent effect on the whole. So, for example, none of the parts have the characteristics of the whole. So the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Uh, the essential properties of the organization are determined from the interaction of the parts. And both the parts and the organization have a purpose. In other words, uh, as a result of World War II, uh, parts developed interests of their own, or people developed interests of their own. Uh, with the volatile world economy today, or we could just say dynamic world economy, 
this metaphor is becoming uh, more valued. Uh, the world economy and global competition have increased organizational complexity and the most um, common management metaphor used with this organization as a social system is the business is a network. So we see networking as key today. Now metaphors and functions also have a role. In other words, the use of metaphors are used and preferred by functions. And for this I want to borrow on descriptive uh, uh, psychology uh, labels uh, metaphors as forms of organizational logic. This comes from uh, Tony Putnam in Ann Arbor and Davis. There's three uh, primary forms of organizational logic. Uh, machine logic, people logic, and numbers logic. Machine logic is preferred by engineers and whereas the organization is a machine with a defined output. They seek cause and effect relationships. They try to search for a magical single root cause to problems. Uh, they can at times sound as if they're thinking of an open system but talking about uh, inputs and outputs but it's within a mechanistic framework. They seek the precision that is attainable from machines whether they're working with machines or people, it doesn't matter. Uh, numbers logic is, is preferred by accountants they think of organization through accounting terms. Their focus is on the bottom line performance. For example, we see this in the auto industry within the U.S. Um, GM, Ford, and Chrysler. In production, they focus on producing the numbers. And for example, you hear workers often complain about that. Uh, they seek numbers, logic, and control, the type of control that is attained in keeping records, as in accounting. People logic is preferred by employees and some managers. Their focus is on interactions, processes, and achievements. The organization is driven by relationships and they seek cooperation and synergy in those relationships. There are problems when we mix these metaphors. Whereas different functions adopt different metaphors and logic. So in meetings it almost sounds as if they're from different worlds or speaking different languages. And, and literally they are. I mean the different metaphors they do not mix well and their users talk at each other instead of communicating. So looking at the organization from one metaphor when decisions are being made from another, it results in confusion and misunderstanding. Uh, the decisions from a different metaphor really appear to have no sense. Or they, they don't think it makes sense at all. Instead of connecting the parts, the parts are driven further apart by incongruent metaphors. So the implications of metaphor is this there needs to be a predominant metaphor adopted by organizational metaphors. This pulls the parts together and creates consistent communication. Listening to the logic being spoken within the organization provides insight to which metaphor is being used and which expectations accompany the metaphor. In other words, if you listen, you can pick it up. The different metaphors literally serve as a language for the users and aligning organizational metaphors could also align the organizational parts and help to achieve desired uh, results. A helping role is to assist functions using different metaphors to see the logic of the others, uh, other functions and to find a common language that unites the functions because it's not going to be apparent to them. It takes a third party or someone not using the metaphor to see the metaphors being used. Uh, these are the uh, references and they'll be attached in the transcript. Thank you.